Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to talk about polygons. We've learned about triangles, three sides. We've learned about quadrilaterals, four sides. So now we're going to step it up to everything with more than four sides and include all of them. So this first slide is a lot of vocab that you already know, but I just want to go through it quickly. So if you need to pause and write any of this down because you don't remember it or just need to write it down again, do that. But I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. The most important thing on this slide that you really need to know is this definition of what a, whoopsie, that's not what I wanted to do, of a polygon. And a polygon is just a straight-sided closed figure. Pretty straightforward. Um, some other things about polygons that we've talked about. This is kind of a more formal definition. Um, not really that important. Uh, just that each center, each segment intersects exactly two other segments, so they're not like all crossing over each other. And uh, no two segments with a common endpoint are collinear. So that just means that uh, that they're, they 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 look like sides. So you can you know they. You don't have like that as a side and then another side to keep going. It would have to kind of be angled like that. Pretty much what you would expect a, a, a polygon to be. Um, another thing we've talked about is the diagonal of a polygon. Uh, it's just a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon. So it kind of goes through the figure, and we'll talk about that. So here's an example in the, in the convex one. There's a, uh, that's a diagonal. Right, and a diagonal could go from here to here, but it couldn't go, for example, from here to here because those are two consecutive vertices and that doesn't go through the polygon. So that's all that means about non-consecutive vertices. So again, don't get too hung up on this. Um, the main thing is we're going to be focusing on uh, convex polygons, polygons that look like that one, kind of what you expect a polygon. We're not really going to worry about concave polygons in this figure. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Um, some special names of polygons. Now, some of these are going to be names you're familiar with. Some of them are going to be new to you, uh, and you are going to be responsible for all of these. So we name polygons based on the number of sides. Um, so you're going to want to make a, make a table, um, names and number of sides. Of course, a three-sided polygon you know is a triangle. A four-sided polygon you know is a quadrilateral. Um, and again, you should pause and write these down as we go. Five-sided polygon, that's a pentagon. You can think of the building in Washington, D.C. A six-sided polygon is a hexagon. Um, a lot of these prefixes are, are Latin, so if you know any of that Latin, that might help you. A seven-sided polygon is a heptagon. Um, that one's less common. Uh, there's a heptathlon in the Olympics. You might be familiar with That's how I always remember it. Eight sides, of course, is an octagon, like an octopus. Uh, nine side is kind of almost sounds like a made up word. It's kind of funny sounding, but a nine sided polygon is a nonagon. Uh, I didn't make this up. I'm just telling you what it is. Uh, ten is a decagon, like a decade has ten years, so a decagon is ten sides. Eleven is an undecagon. So it's kind of like Spanish, un or uno is one, so it's one and ten. Deca means ten, so it's one and ten. Uh, Twelve-sided figure is a dodecagon. So again, connecting to Spanish, and also I think this connects to Latin, although I'm not the Latin expert. Two and ten, so dodeca is twelve. Uh, Fifteen is a pentadecagon. That's one that comes up a lot, so you should be familiar with. And if you don't know the name, or if it's got like a 32 sides or 57 sides, we actually can just call it a 57 gon or a 37 gon, or in general, if we have n sides, it's an n gon. That's not made up. You can actually say that. Okay. Uh, now I'd like you to go ahead and uh, draw those polygons, just some sketches of a triangle, a quadrilateral, a pentagon, and a hexagon, um, just so that we can, uh, you know, have those to work with. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is to draw all the diagonals from one vertex. So choose a vertex and draw all the diagonals. So notice that with the triangle, uh, I couldn't really, couldn't really do that because if I try to draw a diagonal, I can't go through it. Quadrilateral, I could pick, let's say, this vertex and draw there's one diagonal. A pentagon, if I choose a vertex, let's say this one, I could draw one from that vertex, and then a second one from that vertex, and those are the only ones. And then the hexagon, you see I can draw three. 
And what we're really interested in is the number of triangles that are formed in each of these figures. Um, so what you should hopefully see is that in the triangle, of course, there's one triangle. In a quadrilateral, there's two triangles formed. In a pentagon, there's whoops, one, two, three triangles formed. In a hexagon, there's one, two, three, four triangles formed. Uh, and what's interesting here, and let's uh, kind of look at this chart over here that we're going to fill out. So you may want to go ahead and fill that chart out or go ahead and make a chart that looks something like that. And we're going to explore this a little bit. Because uh, what we're interested now in is the angles, the, the sum of the angles in, in each of these figures. And again, you might be familiar with this already, but uh, something you need to know. So, of course, a triangle has just the one triangle. And, of course, we know from our previous work that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So that's just one triangle times 180 degrees, which gives us 180 degrees. The quadrilateral, what's interesting to notice here is that the way we drew that, that diagonal, that if you take that angle and that angle and that angle, plus the three angles, it's going to start to get messy here, but the three angles in the second triangle, if you add up all of those angles, so in other words, these two plus this one plus these two plus this one, that's the four angles in the quadrilateral. So essentially, if you add up all the angles in those two triangles, you get the four angles in the quadrilateral. So since there are two triangles, we get two 180s, which happens to be 360. And we can continue to use that to help us figure out the angles in each of those figures. So since the pentagon had three triangles, again, all the angles in those triangles form the angles in the pentagon. Those one, two, those angles and that one, and those two, and that, those two, and that one, those angles are all the angles in the, tri in the three triangles, and they're the five angles in the pentagon. So we can just calculate the sum of the angles in those three triangles, which is just three triangles, or three 180s, which happens to be 540. We can keep going like this. The hexagon has four, so that's four triangles, four 180s, which is 720. Now, how can we use this to figure out the sum of the angles in any polygon? Well, what's the relationship between the number of sides and the number of triangles? Well, what's the relationship? Hopefully you see the pattern is that there are two fewer triangles than there are sides. So if there are n sides, any number of sides, there's going to be n minus 2 or 2 fewer. So the formula then is just going to be the number of triangles times 180, so the n being the number of sides in the polygon. Um, and so that's, that's a theorem now. Um, this wasn't a formal proof, but we're now going to accept that as true. So the sum of the angles in any polygon with n sides is just n minus 2 times 180. And that's one of those things you're just going to have to memorize. So you should know that one. So if you haven't written it down yet, write it down. Okay, moving on. Some vocab really, really, really important piece of vocab. Like, really important, like you really need to know this. And I say that because it, it's a term that gets forgotten or kind of misunderstood a lot or glossed over. Um, the term is a regular polygon. And you see that word regular and it doesn't really make you think of anything. Oh, regular, just normal, whatever, don't need to think about it much. Um, but regular means something very specific. It's a polygon that is both equiangular equilateral and equiangular. Um, so here you see a hexagon that isn't, is neither. Here you see a hexagon that does have all equal angles, they're all 120, but not equal sides. Here you see one that has equal sides but not equal angles. But this is a regular hexagon, equal sides and equal angles. We call that a regular polygon. Really important vocab to know. So when you see regular polygon, light bulbs should go off. Equal sides, equal angles. Okay, let's do a couple problems. So let's look at the octagon as an example. If I want you to find the measure of each angle in a regular octagon, a regular octagon. Um, and since I didn't say if this was an interior or an exterior angle, we assume interior. Uh, we'll talk about exterior angles in a little bit. But the sum of the measures of, 
of the angles inside that octagon. Well, we know what that is. We can figure out the sum of the measures inside the octagon. That's just n minus 2 times 180, which in this case n is 8 because it's an 8-sided figure. So 8 minus 2 times 180 is 1080. So that's the sum of the angles. But here's the catch. Since it's regular, we know all those angles are equal. So they have to be divided equally. That 1080 degrees must be divided equally. So you can simply take that 1080 and divide it by 8. So you can use this more generally for any situation and just have the formula n minus 2 times 180 and then divide that by the number of sides, which is also the number of angles, divide by n. Um, that's a more formal way to do this calculation, but if you just understand that if all of these angles add up to 180, and there's 8 of them, then they each must be 180 divided by 8, or 135 degrees. That's all for today. Good luck.